Good morning to everybody. My name is uh, Riccardo Zoccarato and I am project engineer at the System Dynamics Competence Center of uh, EngineSoft. Today I will talk about how to achieve multi-flexible body simulation by using Recudine powerful uh, technology. Okay, so the the agenda. Um, I would start the presentation by giving you a brief introduction to Recudine and its nature. Then uh, we will see uh, how to build and simulate multi-flexible body systems in two different ways. So the reduced flex approach and then the full flex approach. After that, we will apply these two methods on a case study that is, okay, the trailer that you can see uh, here. And then finally, I will give uh, an answer to all of your possible questions. So let's start with the webinar. And okay, um, in order to uh, introduce Recordine, I would say that it is a software for simulating the dynamics of rigid multi-body systems as many, many other tools uh, uh, available on the market, uh, but with many more special capabilities. Um, in fact, uh, Recordine can simulate uh, flexible bodies and also um, contacts between flexible bodies like no one else can, and this thanks to its unique technology. Also, it is faster than any other competitor because of its uh, optimized solver. And then another um, interesting fact is that Recudine uh, allows integrated particle simulation uh, in order to simulate the couple dynamics of a mechanical system uh, with uh, a granular flow or with a fluid like um, water or lubricating oil or other kind of fluids. In addition, uh, Recordine is strongly customizable uh, via mm, Visual Basic or C-sharp macros. Anyway, uh, today I will focus on just one of these uh, capabilities, that is flexible body simulation. This is, uh, of course, required when the flexibility of a body um, affects the dynamics of a mechanical system. And so the body cannot be uh, simply represented as a rigid body. Okay, then uh, we start with the first uh, the first approach for flexible modeling, that is Recudine reduced flex technology. This approach is used uh, by almost uh, every multi-body software on the market, and uh, um, this approach is based on the modal reduction method that is also known as craig bantam method. This method starts um, from a finite element representation of the body, so um, a mesh, and then after um, a finite element pre-analysis, it produces a simplified linear representation of the actual structure uh, response. And this is also called uh, the, um, the super element. Uh, this simplified uh, representation is mainly based on the vibrational properties of the body and also on the deformed shape of the body when some load uh, is uh, applied on, on the body itself. So practically, uh, to perform this finite element pre-analysis, you need a finite element software uh, or uh, the, the, the RFlex generator that is uh, integrated in Recodine. This method, I can say, is very fast in simulation, but it has some limitations due to the applied simplification, due to the linear uh, simplification we have applied. Um, instead, okay, this is the, uh, the second kind of approach that is the full flex technology. This uh, particular approach um, allows Recodine to simulate every possible nonlinear flexible system. And so with this approach, Recodine uh, doesn't perform any kind of, of simplification 
but instead it keeps the finite element bodies in the multi-body environment. Um, and so it, it can provide a true integration of the finite element calculation inside the, the dynamic analysis. Only some minor approximation are applied um, in, the, in the solver mathematics in order to improve the CPU efficiency. So finally, with, with this uh, multi-flexible body simulation, we can uh, analyze uh, flexible bodies with nonlinear deformations, uh, materials with nonlinear properties, and contacts uh, over deformable uh, surfaces. So um, every kind of possible system nonlinearity. Moreover, uh, in, the, in the last release of Ricudine, that is the V8R5, uh, um, Ricudine has uh, introduced a useful tool that helps, um, that helps a lot in uh, managing the different representations of a body. And this, this tool is the G-modeling. This tool allows the automation of the, the process needed for converting a body from a rigid body to a full flex body or uh, to a reduced flex uh, body. And so um, this, is, mm, this is possible um, in particular with the automation of all the tasks uh, listed here. So uh, meshing operations, uh, contact creation, uh, finite element pre-analysis in the case of the R-flex bodies. And, uh, convert, and, of course, the, mm, the conversion back to the rigid body version. Also, um, every, every feature previously uh, created and applied to the body uh, mm, is, is preserved. Uh, so this means um, lots of joints, forces, and contacts that have not to be redefined. And so um, this way, no possible uh, mistake is introduced in, in the model and of course um, a final a final um, a final shorter modeling time is is allowed so this ends the, the theoretical part of the of the webinar and now we can skip to the to the case study that I have prepared for the webinar so as you can see this is the case study and uh, uh, it is a, a trailer with one single axle and uh, supported by two lift springs um, two lift spring suspensions uh, this system um, will will only be loaded by gravity in our in our simulation the shaft of the trailer is connected by a spherical joint to a fixed support while the wheels uh, are linked to, to the axle by revolute joints and uh, instead uh, are linked to the ground by an in-plane joint. That is, um, in this case, it is simply a one-direction support. You can see um, in the section view a very simple uh, kinematic scheme for the, for the suspension. So uh, each spring lift, um, sorry, each lift spring is uh, composed mainly by two parts that are fixed to the axle in the midsection. So um, the upper part is also connected to the trailer by a revolute joint and a translational joint. We will, we will model these uh, lift springs with both the reduced flex and the full flex approach in order to compare, uh, finally, the two, the two uh, flexible methods. Okay, first of all, um, first of all, I have used the G-modeling tool to convert the two rigid parts into, uh, into R-flex bodies. So two simplified linear representation um, of the flexibility of the two parts are finally uh, obtained. All the existing joints we have, we have see, uh, seen before um, and that connect the, the, the bodies to the, to the other part of the system are of course preserved but I have to add some some features to the model and I would like 
to connect the lift, um, the lift spring uh, upper part uh, and the lower part, but but I cannot apply a nonlinear contact uh, to, between the two bodies to connect them. So I have to do a um, I have to apply a simplification, and and then I add uh, two in-plane joints uh, at the ends uh, of the lower part. Uh, this in order to link uh, the lower part to the upper part. With these two simple supports, uh, then when the upper part will bend, uh, so it will press on the lower part and. Okay, after uh, simulating the, the full flex um, model, we finally obtained uh, these visual results, these three videos. So you can see that the trailer the trailer falls under the, the gravity load, and so the suspensions uh, undergo a dynamic loading. You can see that the trailer, uh, of course, oscillates uh, many times, um, bending repeatedly um, and, and bending repeatedly the, the, the lift springs until the dumping finally stops uh, the, the oscillations. Also, you can see the, the blue vectors that are um, representing the joint loads applied by the lower part uh, of the lift spring to the upper part. And then I have also plotted the Fomesis equivalent stress on the deformed lift springs. Okay, so just skipping to the next slide. Don't know. Okay, okay. Now I think you can see it. So I have tested also the full flex approach on the same system. So with the G modeling tool, I have converted the R flex bodies into full flex bodies. So um, these are real finite element flexible bodies. This time, um, this time there is no linear limitation to the model. So I can uh, I can apply a nonlinear contact between the two parts. Uh, so um, this is uh, just one single contact that is linking the entire uh, shared faces of the, of the two bodies. Also, um, I have removed uh, the fixed joint supporting uh, the upper part of the lift spring, and instead I have applied a translational joint that allows the upper part of the lift spring to translate vertically and so, um, and so press on the lower part. Okay, just okay. The the next slide. So um, again, after running the simulation, we we, we can obtain this visual result. Um, the animation is, I can say, very similar to the previous one. So with the trailer oscillating a few times before stopping. Anyway, uh, this time the 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 system is very different because the two parts of the lift spring are interacting uh, only through nonlinear contact. So uh, the, entire, uh, length, uh, the entire length of the, of the bodies uh, is loaded by a contact pressure. Okay. Just to, to have a comparison between the, the two applied methods, and to um, to understand deeply what have changed between the two model versions, um, let's um, analyze the suspension uh, vertical stiffness in in the two model versions. So this is a a, a good way to compare uh, the reduced flex and the full flex methods. So the the stiffness of a flexible part is defined um, as the applied uh, the applied load divided by the obtained uh, deflections. The global mass of trailer and freight is is a, about uh, 1,500 kilo, that would produce a static load of about 7.35 um, kilo newtons on each uh, on each one of the of the two suspensions. During during each of the two simulations, uh, I have tracked uh, the vertical displacement of the trailer center of mass. 
and this is almost equal to the vertical deflections uh, of the of the two lift springs. So you can see um, in in blue the blue curve uh, the deflections of the reduced flex lift springs, while in in green uh, the deflections of the of the full flex lift springs. The full flex uh, final deflection is sensibly greater than the, the R-Flex one. And this means that the R-Flex lift springs uh, are sensibly stiffer than the full flex ones. Uh, just about uh, just about 90, 19% stiffer than the than the full flex um, suspensions. And this of course is because the the R Flex technology can only approximate the can only approximate the behavior of a, a nonlinear system, and uh, this this could lead to, uh, for example, uh, an underestimation of the of the system flexibility. Okay, so uh, thank you for your attention, um, and now uh, feel free to to ask me uh, any question you want.